Michael Burry has warned of a consumer recession and potentially earnings trouble for many corporations going forward. He specifically referred to declining savings rates, the possibility of greater credit card debt, and the impact this might have on the economy more generally. Now in this video, I'm going to look at whether Michael Burry is correct here. And in large part, I do actually agree with him, because what he is saying is largely borne out in the data. It's borne out in the PCA data that has shown a decline in the savings rates. It's borne out in the earnings results from Target and from Walmart and many other organizations. Snap, for example, recently gave a warning that there could be a decline in earnings as advertisers are largely pulling back. So Michael Burry does appear to be spot on. However, it is worth digging a little bit deeper into what the data says to further analyze whether there's basis to Michael Burry's assertions here. Of course, we should start by looking at what exactly Michael Burry said. So he said in a tweet, US personal savings fall to 2013 levels, the savings rate to 2008 levels, while revolving credit card debt grew at a record setting pace back to pre-COVID peak levels, despite those trillions of dollars of cash dropped in their laps, looming a consumer recession and more earnings trouble. And that's effectively correct in many ways, and I'll get to the data in a second. He also posted two graphs in this tweet that illustrated his point. The first of these graphs is looking at the personal savings rate, and that has actually declined. The second graph is looking at revolving credit, so things like credit cards and the like, and that has certainly shot up. This is also largely echoing some of what Brian Moynihan, the Bank of America CEO, had also said about credit card spending and credit card debt from consumers, although he did have rather a more positive spin on the data. I do want to get your sense on the pulse of the consumer, though, because yeah. you really have a bird's eye view. Yeah. Do you find it a good time to keep seeing those credit card borrowings expand yeah. at a time when a lot of consumers are feeling crimped by inflation? So let's let's pull back and just look at it overall. So there are a couple key points. Number one, the account balance of the consumer pre-pandemic to now are multiples bigger. So a person had uh, you know, two to 3,000 average collective balance in accounts, now has, and that would have been about 1,400, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, one to 2,000 would have been about 1,400, is now almost 4,000 bucks. A person that had two to 5,000 would have about 3,500 on average, it now has $13,000. So just step back and think about it. It grew 5% in the month of April from March. So what you're seeing is consumers have more money in their accounts. The, the, idea that they spent the pandemic money that came in January, March last year, just not true. Now, the second question is, they pay down their credit card balances. From 100 billion we were down to 70, it's back up to 80, lots of borrowing capacity. The third point is, are they spending? And that's what's interesting. In the first two weeks of May, the consumer spent 10% more than they did last May. So is Michael Burry correct here? Well, to see this, we need to unpackage exactly what he has said. He's claimed, first, consumer saving has gone down. Secondly, revolving credit has gone up and just generally debt has gone up and has become more expensive. Thirdly, this is going to negatively impact corporate earnings. And then fourthly, there's a corollary that this could potentially trigger a broader recession or economic downturns. So we need to unpackage those and see whether or not the premises are supported to get to that conclusion about a broader downturn. And as I've indicated, I do actually largely agree with Michael Burry about this particular point. So we can start with the consumer story, savings and debt. Well, in terms of savings, Michael Burry is correct. He's adduced a graph about this. Similarly with revolving debt, credit card debt has gone up as well. The graphs are right there from Bloomberg in his case. But we also dig deeper at the PCE data coming up from the United States government. We can see that directly. According to the PCE data, personal savings rates have gone down to 4%. They have been steadily declining. It's just been a steady downward trajectory here. Now there's a positive spin you can put on this and a negative spin you can put on it. The positive spin is the consumers are so confident about the economy, they're going out and spending on travel and other things. The negative spin is really multifold. Firstly, inflation is cutting in to the amount of disposable income people have after they're spending on staples. Therefore, they're not able to save, i.e. they can't afford to actually save money and this is then leading to a lower savings rate. I'm partial to that interpretation because real wages growth is actually negative. Furthermore, even if we take that positive spin, people are spending money on travel and the like, even if we take that positive spin, that means that consumers are going to have less money in the bank for when a recession hits 
and they potentially end up unemployed or with fewer hours or potentially wages being cut, albeit wages tend to be quite sticky. So therefore, the consumer is ultimately going to be in a worse position than might otherwise be the case. So regardless of your interpretation about the exact root cause for this, it isn't going to be good for the economy more generally over the long term. Now, again, I want to caveat this. An excess savings rate is not good. If people are just putting too much money in the bank account, they're not going out and investing in productive things. So there has to be a balance. But a savings rate that's going down towards zero is not at that balance. We're seeing similar things with debt. Michael Burry has adduced a graph about revolving credit. That's absolutely right. And when people are going out and spending more on credit cards, it's potentially telling you that they are actually not able to afford some of what they were buying. Now, granted, the smart way with credit cards is you go and spend with a credit card, you pay it off immediately and get the points. But we all know that is not happening with the overwhelming majority of consumers, particularly when we see such a sharp uptick in the credit card debt. We also see this with mortgages, where mortgage rates have been going up significantly. Now, granted, that does not affect existing homeowners. It only affects people going out and buying a new home. But when those people go and buy a new home, and that will happen over time, they're going to need to spend more money. And this will therefore reduce the amount of spending people will do in the economy. So Michael Burry is correct about the consumer story here. I have heard other assertions from bank CEOs. In particular, the Bank of America CEO has been particularly bullish about the state of the consumer. However, we can't just look at the average state of the consumer. Consumers might have some cash, but it's not evenly distributed across consumers. And we're looking at recession likelihood. We basically just need some consumers to be really hit for recession likelihood to ratchet up and for an economic downturn to occur. Robert, what does this mean for the U.S. consumer? They're not, are they strong enough to, to withstand this for a couple of quarters? So the consumer in general is. They still have significant savings that were built up during the pandemic with all the transfers from the fiscal side. But the issue, Francine, is distribution. What about Michael Burry's assertion that corporate earnings are going to decline? Well, this is actually not a brave call. We are already seeing corporate earnings decline. We've seen this with Target and Walmart. And also we're seeing social media companies warning that advertising spend is on the downward, telling us that corporate earnings appear to be in for significant headwinds. This appears to be, of course, both ends of the income statement are being crunched. These companies are needing to spend more to get their inputs, so spend more on transport, on wages, on inventory. But they're getting less from their consumers because they're less able to pass on the cost to their buyers because there has not been real wage increases. Therefore, they're really getting crunched on their earnings. Now, if we look at quarterly earnings, we can see this significantly. So the quarterly earnings for Target went down 52% year on year. The Walmart quarterly earnings went down 25% year on year. Furthermore, inventory is building up. Target has experienced a nearly 50% increase in its inventory year on year. Walmart, a 32% increase in inventory year on year. That's a bad sign. It tells us they are less able to sell some of their inventory, and there's an inventory stockpile building up, which tells us they might in the future need to discount some of that inventory. We also see this from some of the social media companies that have warned us about declining advertising spend. We've seen the average revenue per user decline for all of the major social media companies. There would be Meta, Twitter, Alphabet, Snap, all of seemingly experienced declines in the average revenue per user. Snap has also issued an additional warning about potential downside in advertising revenue, telling us that many of these social media companies expect firms to be less able to advertise going forward, maybe because they simply are not expecting consumers to actually buy what they're advertising, which is again a negative signal for corporate earnings more generally. Now, I should say there are some caveats though. For example, Home Depot has done surprisingly well, despite all of these headwinds. However, there's also some dark clouds with the Home Depot earnings. Home Depot experienced positive and very positive results here. However, when we're looking deeper at what this means, it tells us that people are staying put in their current house. They're less likely to move houses because interest rates are so high. Therefore, those consumers are just staying home and renovating. 
This, to some extent, tells us that while there's an uplift right now for things like Home Depot, the bigger to get expenditure on new construction is potentially going to decline as people are less likely to move into a new house because of the cost of doing so. So there's a broader negative even behind that apparently positive Home Depot result. So in general terms, Michael Burry is absolutely right. Corporate earnings do appear to be likely to be hit. They have already been hit and there appears to be further downside. Now, of course, if you're interested in finding out more about corporate earnings and analyzing those in more detail, go and check out Simply Wall Street. Simply Wall Street has lots of data about companies' fundamental information, including analyst EPS forecasts, which are clearly useful if you're going to be analyzing forecasts for companies and analyzing what their earnings are going to do. Now, while it is not necessarily as comprehensive as Bloomberg or FactSet, it's certainly much cheaper than them. And it's even cheaper if you sign up using my link in the description below, where you can get two free weeks on a free premium trial and also 30% off if you sign up using my link. And Simply Wall Street is actually really quite a useful and good value for money tool. And I found it useful for my investing personally, and hopefully you will as well. So will there be a recession? Well, this is really crystal ball gazing. And if you predict a recession enough times, you will eventually be correct. However, focusing on Michael Burry, he often makes quite prescient and quite thought-provoking comments, even if he is not always ultimately right. So, for example, in early 2021, he predicted that fiscal stimulus would be incredibly inflationary. Now, at the time the stimulus came into the economy, that was not immediately felt, but it definitely was by the end of 2021. So he was quite prescient there, and certainly he was correct to point out some of those issues. Similarly with many of the other stocks that he has talked about. Now in this context, will there be a recession? Economists are putting the likelihood of a recession at around 30 to 30%, depending upon exactly which survey you are looking at. Furthermore, if we look at consumer sentiment, that has also been declining. However, there were so many moving parts that it makes it very difficult to know with certainty about whether we will get a recession in 2022, 2023, 2024. So looking at the supply chain aspect of this. In particular, we're looking at what's happening in China and in Europe. This appears to be continuing to create problems, and it appears to be a continuing inflation driver, which is obviously going to downweigh on growth over the long term. For example, China has continued lockdowns. Now, whether or not you agree with those, they do have a negative economic impact. China's economic growth forecasts have been downgraded by major banks, and downgraded into the 3% plus area, as opposed to the 5.5% growth target that the CCP actually has. Put differently, when China's growth forecasts get crunched, that also crunches growth for other economies due to supply chain linkages. Similarly in Europe. Europe is a continuing moving feast. However, it appears that the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine will persist for some time. Europe is continuing to try to embargo Russian oil. Now, this has not yet been finalized, but if they ultimately do that, oil prices are likely to increase significantly, which is going to be further inflationary, but is not going to increase productivity. So it could further weigh on the economy. Now, then enter the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve obviously wants to get on top of inflation, but here the inflation is primarily driven by supply side factors. What that means is the Federal Reserve needs to crunch demand by even more than would be the case if demand alone were driving inflation. So here the Federal Reserve is going to need to go even harder to get inflation under control, and therefore risk tipping the economy into recession even more than would otherwise be the case. So we're seeing the Federal Reserve interface with supply factors to increase the likelihood of a recession. Now, granted, governments are going to try to avoid a recession. They might try to do this by increasing supply. However, most governments have not done this very well. The British government has done a bad job with its super profits tax, which clearly discourages investment. No company is going to go out and invest in oil and gas when you're just going to be slugged with a super profits tax. It's stupid. Similarly, in the United States, the negative rhetoric about fossil fuels is hardly going to encourage oil and gas companies to go out and invest in fossil fuels. This is the case no matter how much Joe Biden wants to use the bully pulpit of the presidency to try to encourage them to do so. So we're seeing significant ongoing headwinds 
that would point me toward thinking a recession is more likely, and probably at this point, more likely to occur in 2023, when interest rates really start to bite, as opposed to 2022, when they are just starting to bite. Nevertheless, those are my thoughts about a recession and the likelihood thereof, and how that interfaces with what Michael Burry is saying about consumer demand and how that impacts corporate earnings. Now, of course, if you think that I'm wrong about this, if you think that there isn't going to be a recession, or a recession is going to be more imminent than I've suggested, I would be interested to hear that in the comments below, because other views on this are obviously going to be informative. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out Simply Wall Street for a wealth of information about corporations, about the economy, and about various sectors. And I found it super useful for my investing. And if you sign up using my link in the description below, you can get 30% off. And 30% off is always great. So check them out. So thanks a lot for tuning in. And hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.